Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achena. Welcome to episode 64 of Game Programming. So last time we took a look at a very, very basic and I guess minimal and simplistic way of handling collision. And it was simply one line of code basically and that just said uh, to test a simple, very, very simple um, thing. Uh, Level.getTile, if, if the tile that we want to advance to is solid, then don't let us go there. All right, pretty simple, right? So if collision... If a collision actually does occur, and this is actually probably incorrect because um, it says if there's not a collision. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's correct. Sorry. If it, so if there's not a collision, let's move. Um, so let's just launch that and see what that does. So these tiles over here are solid. Can we walk into them? No, we cannot. Um, and if I go up here, then we can't We can't walk into them. So sweet. It, right? It works. Now, it doesn't... Well, it does work. And I mean, it, I, I don't want to tell you guys that it doesn't work because it does work, right? But what I, what we want to do is kind of control it a bit more. So what we're going to cover today is going to be pretty simple, right? All we're going to cover today is we're going to talk about how we can make sure that if we actually are colliding with something, that's probably a bad example because it's horrible. If we go down here. If we are actually colliding with something like this thing here, we can't move up and down, right? We can move up and down now, but if I am actually colliding with it and I try and move down, look at that, we can't move down and we can't move up. Why not? And also if we collide into something like that, we cannot move left and right, right? I'm pressing the buttons. We can't move left and right. Why not? That's a bit of a problem because I like sliding and I guess, it's, I guess this is called sliding, but what I mean is I like rubbing up against a wall. That sounds wrong, but what, what I mean is I love just being able to go up to a wall and just slide across it. And I can't do that in this game that we've made so far. And that's not good. So we're going to talk about fixing that today. And then next time, next episode, we'll take a look at actually refining this collision detection method to make it a bit more precise. And But more importantly, give us more control over what area is solid. Um, because at the moment, you can see that we kind of, our King Cherno sprite here kind of, you know, is halfway through this little wall. You can see that actually it is exactly halfway, I think. Um, and we, you know, we sort of want to want to be able to move it back and say that okay, that is collidable. Don't let him go f past that. And um, basically, what we want to be able to do is not only shift this area that is collidable, but also maybe widen it or narrow it in some cases. Um, and that's what we'll talk about in the next episode. But this episode, we're going to talk about that, that sliding thing I talked about. So sliding, how does it work? It's really simple. All right, it is really simple. Basically, what we've got right now is one expression. We say that if, well, it's not really an expression, is it? I guess it's called, I don't know what it's called, actually. I should probably know this. Um, it was a Boolean expression. I guess you could call it a Boolean expression. But we've got this one little test here, and it says that if there is no collision in either of those terminals, then make sure movement works, right? And that's all cool, but the thing is, sometimes, right, there is collision in one but not the other. In this case, if I move up here and go back to, we should always change our spawn location, shouldn't we? Okay. As you can see, that's the x-axis, right? This is the y-axis. If I go on the x-axis, I'm colliding on the x-axis. And what this code over here says is that if there is a collision on either of the axis, then don't let the person move. That's why I can't move. That's that's the problem, all right? You can see how simple it is. So all I really need to do is separate them. And there's two ways of doing that. There's one way, and I can simply say that if there's a collision in, ooh, let's just say, hmm. Well, we could separate this out in two ways. I could say if there's a collision in XA, and that equals zero, then, you know, if there's, sorry, if there's no collision in XA, we can move XA. But if there's a collision in YA, then let's just change this around. You know, we could do it that way. And if, if we test if this works, um, so you can see that I can actually move on one axis. And if I come over here, I can actually slide across. So that's one way of doing it. That's not the way that I like doing it, but that is one way of doing it. Um, yeah, so you can see that you can slide up and down um, it perfectly now. So we can do pretty cool stuff like this corner stuff. 
And that's pretty awesome. So there we go, that, that's that problem fixed. That's one of the ways of fixing it. Um, there is one other way though, because this kind of just separates them into two if statements. And that, that kind of works, but what we can do is separate the entire movement system. Um, and I'm actually just thinking right now if that would be faster or slower in terms of performance, but I'm not sure, so let's just do it anyway. So what I could do is I could actually retain it as it was before, which is like this, right? So in other words, we go back to what we had before. But what I could say is instead of, you know, moving on two axes at once, I could simply say that if, if we are moving, if xa doesn't equal zero and ya doesn't equal zero, right? What does that mean? That means that we're actually trying to move on two axes at once, right? So in other words, if I just prove my point here by printing, um, we are moving on two axis. I love putting exclamation marks everywhere. But anyway, um, you can see that if I move normally now, just up and down, it's not gonna work. But if I move diagonally, look at that, it says we'll move on two axis. So in other words, if we are moving on both XA and YA, then we can simply separate this and say that let's move it XA and let's move it on YA separately, whoops, All right? So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, let's just redo that entire thing again, but this time let's just do it set, let's run it twice. Let's run it once for the X and one, once for the Y. Um, and the reason, the reason that we do this is because it's probably a bit, I'm just thinking, hmm. And I guess we'd also, we could return, ah, it should return anyway, though, that's the thing. I'm not sure if it would actually, it's actually a good, hmm. Let's test that right now. I'm getting a bit off topic here, but I'm actually genuinely interested. Um, does this run? I guess it... Yeah, it does. Well, in that case, we should definitely return. Alright, so we basically return just gets out of the method. You guys should know that. But anyway, um, you can see now that what I've done here is I've separated it, and I'll explain that in a minute. But, um, yeah, there we go. So, we still get that sliding movement with one um, little thing here. All right, so let's talk about this quickly and um, and then that's it. So basically what we've done here is we've said that if we are advancing on two axes, we're just gonna split it up. So we're gonna run the what we're gonna run this entire method once just for the X axis, and then we're gonna run it another time just for the Y axis. And that way, obviously, you know, Y is gonna equal zero in, the, in X's case, and X is gonna equal zero in, y, in Y's case, which is why it's going to process this collision separately for two different axes. So really, I showed you guys two methods um, today, and you guys can use either of those methods, as you, as you know, because they're, um, well, they're exactly the same. Like, they, I don't think there's actually a difference in performance either. There might be. Um, I don't know. I'll have to look that up. If you guys actually see that there's a difference in performance, let me know, because I don't have time to check that stuff out. But anyway, the point is, that is how we can do sliding. And next time, we'll talk about... Um, We'll talk about a more advanced way of colliding. Well, not, not really a more advanced way, it's just building on this way, but what I mean is a much more controllable and um, customizable way of, colli of handling collision detection and response. Anyway, guys, I'll see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Game Programming. If you did, please hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.